The nation's governors are back in town for their annual winter meeting. In the past, they have often celebrated bipartisan efforts in sharp contrast to the gridlock here in Washington. But this year, the governors seem just as divided as our national leaders over Obamacare, jobs, and social issues. Joining us now, the Republican governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, and Peter Shumlin of Vermont, chair of the Democratic Governors Association. Governors, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Governor Shumlin, we ran a clip of you just before the break bashing your Republican colleagues for, as you said, alienating women, immigrants, and gays. And in a session that with uh, President Obama uh, earlier this week, he talked about the fact that Republican, your colleagues, are pushing those same old top-down, tired economic policies. Is this conference all about trying to win Democratic seats? You now trail 21 to 29. No, it's not. And I guess I disagree with you a little bit, Chris. I do think that the nation's governors work together in a bipartisan fashion to get things done because governors have to get things done. Having said that, uh, we clearly are in an election year. And when we want to talk about <coughs> politics, we do. My view is, and I think the president agrees, that uh, we have seen the Republican governors got elected in 2010 uh, employ, uh, deploy failed economic policies that have not created jobs for the middle class who are struggling, have refused to raise minimum wages, have refused to lift the boats of working people, and instead have cut taxes for the top 1%, given goodies to the very wealthiest, and charged that to the middle class. Now, while they've done that, they've been distracted by the same social agenda that has absorbed the Tea Party folks in Congress, going after sonograms and and go, women making the most personal of health care decisions, uh, going after, you know, gays and working Americans, teachers. Uh, and they've paid for these tax cuts by slashing education. So we just don't think that's a prescription for job growth. Uh, Governor Walker, all of you meet tomorrow at the White House with President Obama. If he tries to put Republicans on the defensive, uh, how are you going to push back? Well, I think in this particular session, the, the initial point that Governor Shumlin mentioned, I think I agree with for example, we're going to talk about the National Guard, where I think there is a common agreement amongst all 50 governors uh, that we shouldn't go back to pre-9-11 uh, standards when it comes to the National Guard in any of our states or nationally. So there are issues we agree on. I think we get together as all of the nation's governors, both in the conference and at the White House. The one area where I would disagree with the governor is that when you look at the successful governors across America that are Republicans in states like mine, where private sector job growth is the best from April through December of last year that it's been since 1994, or a place like Florida where Rick Scott brought the unemployment rate down five points, or Rick Schneider did about the same thing in Michigan. You look at Susanna Martinez and, and Nikki Haley and other governors like that, they are focused on economic and fiscal issues just like I am, and that's why we're doing well across the country. One big issue that, that all governors are dealing with, and I suspect is going to come up over the next few days, is Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And reading about the two of you, you couldn't be on more different tracks. Let me put it up on the screen. In Wisconsin, Governor Walker, you rejected federal money to expand Medicaid, and you deferred to a federal exchange uh, to run Obamacare, not a state exchange. On the other hand, in Vermont, Governor Shumlin, you accepted money to expand Medicaid and are running your own exchange. Let's discuss both of those. Governor Shumlin, Vermont's exchange, I think it's fair to say, has been a mess. Well, no, it hasn't. But let, let, me, let me just finish. I mean, there have been big problems with both small businesses and individuals trying to sign up. No? No. Listen. No? There isn't an exchange in the country that hasn't had a challenge with the rollout. We acknowledge that. But Vermont happens to be the state that has signed up more people per capita for affordable health care than any other state in the nation, including the federal exchange. So, you know, you've got to keep all this in context. But listen, here's the point. Is, None, aren't, aren't, big, aren't small businesses still having a problem because the back end hasn't been small built? Small businesses can't sign up on the exchange. Individuals have. We've gotten everybody in. But listen, here's the point. We all acknowledge, including your president and governors, getting the exchanges up was tough. But here's the challenge for, I believe, this issue for governors in this election. Uh, websites get fixed. We're fixing ours. They're fixing theirs. The federal exchange is working better. The problem for the Republican governors, in my view on this one, is, listen, I have people come up to me every day and say, thank you, governor. I finally have health care I can afford. Now, governors get held to a different standard on health care than congressional folks. Our constituents are smart. They know we didn't pass it, we didn't vote for it, we didn't uh, create it. We have to implement it. Now, what voters want is for their governors to get health care to folks who can't afford it, to accept hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money to help support something let that me, both let business let and individuals struggle to Let me bring, let me bring Governor Walker on, the, on exactly that subject. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to speak to 
Obamacare and the exchanges and whether this is just a blip or something more serious. And to Governor Shumlin's point, you turned down $119 million in federal money to expand Medicaid. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say, really? Well, in our case, I don't think the measure of success in government is how many people are dependent on the government. I want people to no longer be dependent because we empower them to get good jobs, family supporting careers in the private sector, and that's part of our, our philosophy. We did something unique. We didn't do what other states did by just not taking the Medicaid expansion. We didn't take uh, the challenges that come with the Medicaid expansion and putting our taxpayers at risk. Instead, we found a way to do something the Wisconsin way, where we, for the first time in our state's history, even my predecessor, Democrat, had people on a waiting list living in poverty for, for health care. We cover everyone in poverty uh, who's living, uh, living in poverty under Medicaid. We cover everyone above it by transitioning them to the marketplace. We have 224,000 more people covered than we did before, and yet we don't put the taxpayers at risk. I think that's a win. I think that's what people are looking for out of Republicans or Democrats is leaders who find a unique way to reform things. But Chris, if I can just follow up, you know, what Governor Walker Briefly. just said uh, may be true, but he's, he's turning down in Wisconsin, as an example, $4.4 billion in federal money over the next decade that would help Wisconsinites get affordable health care. Now, I'm just saying, in my state and other states around the country, these Republican governors have, because they don't like the president, because they want to make a political point, are hurting their constituents. That, and I think me, that's well, going to hurt them at Governor the Walker, you got 30 seconds to respond. Because I love the taxpayers. I don't want to put them at risk. Even before the Medicaid expansion, I had to add $600 million more to Medicaid. Almost 40 percent of that was to fill in the, the federal government reneging on commitments they've already made even before the Medicaid expansion. That commitment's not going to be there, and taxpayers all across America are going to be on the hook. They're not going to be on the hook in Wisconsin. Governor Walker, you are getting heat now for two local investigations in the state of Wisconsin. First, when you were the Milwaukee County Executive, uh, there are allegations, and in fact people have been convicted, for working on county time to help you and the Lieutenant Governor get elected. Here is an anti-Walker ad that is running right now in Wisconsin. Take a look. The investigation is getting closer to Governor Walker. What did the President know and when did he first know it? What did Scott Walker know and when did he know it? Now, we should point out that they have brought charges against a number of people. They brought absolutely no charges against you. But the reason this is hot again is because thousands of emails were released this week that indicate that you knew that public workers were working on county time in political campaigns, which is against the law. Right. And that's just not it's absolutely not true. And if you look at the facts out there, this is old news. This is uh, about a case that was closed last March. A Democratic district attorney in Milwaukee County spent multiple years looking at all this information. The 27,000 plus pages of documents that were just released this week have been looked by a team led by a Democrat in Milwaukee County. And last year in March, he announced the end of that case. Plain and simple, it's old news. But we have our political operatives at the DNC and the DGA that desperately want to switch the subject from the fact of things like us taking a $3.6 billion budget deficit and turning it into a nearly billion dollar surplus. They don't want to talk about the improvement in the economy. They don't want to talk about the successes we've had in our state. Instead, they desperately want to switch the subject on a subject that's already been resolved as of last March. Now, it may be old news, and I want to point out again that there were no charges were brought against you, but because of this dump of 25,000 documents, it's new news to a lot of the people in the state, and, and it's been big news in local papers in Wisconsin. In one email that was released this week, your then Chief of Staff, Thomas Nardelli, and let's put this up on the screen, writes campaign and county workers that you wanted to hold daily conference calls, quote, to review events of the day or of a previous or future day so we can better coordinate sound, timely responses. And in another email, County Administrative Director Cynthia Archer suggests that colleagues should use a private email account. I use this private account quite a bit to communicate with SKW, that's you, and Nardelli, the former chief of staff. Question, if county workers were doing nothing wrong, why should they be using a private email account? Well, but that's exactly to my point. You had a Democratic district attorney spend almost three years looking at every single one of those communications, interviewing people, talking to people, and close the Did case you know last March. Did a private email account? No, again, it's one of those where I point out the, the district attorney has reviewed every single one of these issues. And but, sir, you're not answering my question. No, because I, I, I'm not going to get into 27,000 different pieces of information. The bottom line is a Democrat who led the district attorney's office looked at all this, decided not to charge anything other than the individuals you mentioned who are not uh, who are people who had worked for the county in the past but don't work for me today I think that's pretty straightforward it's one of those things where they just want to keep pushing this issue uh, into the forefront because in the end 
uh, the folks running against us can't counter our positive message when it comes to the economy and creating budget surpluses. Well, you are in an election this year, as you yeah. point out. Uh, a lot of people talked about you possibly running for president in 2016. Should Republicans worry from all of this about you as a potential presidential candidate in 2016? No, I think we'll, we'll lay the issues out. I think voters are much more concerned about the problems you mentioned with state and federal exchanges across the country, because that actually affects their health care. They're concerned about the economic decisions that are distracting, putting, putting focus on helping private sector employers create more jobs. Those are the things they should be worried about. Those are the things we replaced in Wisconsin, where our state lost 133,000 jobs because of the poor policies of the past. Instead, we've created over 100,000 jobs in our state. We've turned a budget surplus or budget deficit into a surplus. Those are the things voters are concerned about. Governor Walker, Governor Shumlin, we want to thank you both for coming in today, and we'll stay on top of all these issues. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you both. When we come back, don't expect the budget compromise President Obama floated last year to show up in his new plan. The panel comes back to discuss his changing position on entitlement reform. And be sure to tell us what you think on Facebook and share your favorite moments from today's show with other FNS fans.